Hello everyone, bringing you a video today looking at some assorted components of 1937 pattern equipment. These are all ersatz or economy in form and they are therefore slightly different from those you'll typically see, be it in the materials used or in the actual manufacturing methods used. And that's what we're going to have a look at in the video now is some of these different economy components you can find often manufactured later in the war, but we do have a, an example of some earlier war ersatz straps to have a look at as well. And without further ado, we'll get into the main part of the video now and have a look at these various components. So the first bit of ersatz or economy kit we're going to have a look at here, much as the video is titled 1937 pattern, and that's really what we're looking at. These are technically still part of the 1908 pattern equipment. These are a set of supporting straps for the pack and obviously still intended to be used with 1937 pattern, but still part of the 1908 equipment at the sort of time period we're looking for. And what makes these different from normal webbing straps, as you can see here, is they're made of a twilled material, which has been stitched over to form the strap. I'll bring this into focus here. You can see the layering of this and the row of stitching down each side. The metal fittings are standard and this pair have just been made from this material rather than webbing but serve exactly the same function as you would see rather smudged maker's mark there i'd be very happy i'm not a uh, expert on makers of web equipment by any means and if anyone can discern the more smudged or slightly faded stamps seen in this video if i don't men mention who the manufacturer is please do add a comment with a timestamp down below. I'd be very happy for assistance with that. You can see the date there of 1941, the broad arrow there as well. And there are a series of components made in this way, L-straps, the braces for the equipment as well. You also see packs with the straps, the one inch straps on the front of the pack to close the flap made in this way as well, obviously with the, the brass tip on the end. And you can see this strap here made by the same manufacturer, the same date and the broad arrow there, slightly clearer stamp in this instance, as you can see there. So that's the first thing look, to look at here is a set of these straps. These are earlier war items, 41, 42, some of the dates you'll see on these. There's more information on this equipment on Khaki Web, as there often is with the web equipment I talk about. There's a section in the 1937 pattern page over there talking about ersatz versions of the equipment, and these along with the other elements made in this uh, manner are discussed over there so well worth going and having a look at that so we have another supporting strap here and this is a later war economy example of the supporting strap for the pack just a single strap in this instance you see the stamp on the back here we have the manufacturer mw and s limited there and the stamp where the date is is rather faded but i think it might be 44 a lot of this economy web equipment with the the modified metal fittings which we'll talk about in just a minute uh, is dated 44 or 45 that's where a lot of it seems to have been manufactured. You can see the buckle is a standard form, but it isn't made of brass. This is actually made of sheridized steel, which is this sort of dulled steel. The sheridizing process is supposed to prevent this from rusting. So you've had a swap from brass to steel, and that's going to be a, a theme through most of the bits of the kit we look at. And the tip on the other end is also made of sheridized steel as well. Of course, this equipment, wartime manufactured equipment, the main thought behind it is it's going to be used in the field it's not for polishing up and using on parade so this is a good uh, economization on manufacturing obviously you're conserving brass for use in manufacturing small arms ammunition and shell casings and so forth so that's the main reason for this change to sheridized steel it's not across the board you still see a lot of equipment with brass fittings being manufactured on some of the items we're going to have a look at there's a mix and match on one piece of webbing but this is one change that was permitted in terms of the contracts let uh, to allow for uh, an economization on the use of brass in manufacturing web equipment. So just one example there of a supporting strap with these sheridized metal fittings. We'll next have a look at this brace and this is another product of MW and S as we can see here nice clear large stamp on the back here and the size normal in this instance and again 1944 quite clearly stamped there. This shows an interesting change in manufacturing. MW and S could produce what's referred to as reduction woven webbing where the two inch section over the shoulder necks down to one inch very neatly in the weaving process. This however has been manufactured in a much cruder form with a, a one inch strap tucked in here into a folded over section the end of the two inch strap and the whole thing stitched together. So it's, this is made in three pieces, two one inch sections with a two inch section over the shoulder and just stitched together at the ends with the ends folded over as you can see there. 
You can actually see the stitching on the back there, which shows a little bit more clearly how these go together. So this isn't so much an economy measure, but it had been introduced for companies which couldn't make things according to the reduction woven method of doing things. They didn't have the equipment to do that. They could manufacture using different methods such as this. And it's interesting because MWS could manufacture reduction woven webbing, but obviously some of the items they manufactured, they used this method instead. This is, again, an economy piece. It has the sheridized steel fittings. You can see that the rivets are brass, but the metal tips are again sheridized steel with a little bit of rust forming on this, as you can see there, which does happen with these. So there's no sort of official recognition of these as being economy. It is just a brace. There's no special designation for these, but this was done as an economy measure. So we're just referring to these as economy pieces for that reason. We'll bring another piece of webbing in now to have a look at. We'll next have a look at some L straps here, obviously the supporting straps to carry the pack or the haversack on the back. And we have three examples here, all right-handed interestingly. These are just singles I've picked up from various pound piles and things at shows. And what we have in the middle here is an example of the production woven method of manufacturing these going from the two inch to the one inch, which obviously I was mentioning when talking about the braces. And then we have here two examples with the same manufacturing method as we saw when looking at the braces, where you have this folded over where the one inch strap meets the two inch strap. So manufactured as separate pieces rather than reducing down the weaving as we have on this one. This L strap here has mostly brass fittings. You've got a brass hook here and the webbing tip, the metal tip of the webbing at this end is also made of brass as you can see there. But at this end, we have a sheridized steel two inch tip where the two inch strap comes to an end here. So that's made of sheridized steel. We do have a very large stamp marking on the back here. And we have the very clear date there of 1945 and interestingly a contract number as well. A very large arrow at the end there, the broad arrow at the end there. And then we have, I think this would be Bagcraft looking at it, almost certainly, covered with the 390 stamped in the middle there. But uh, a very large and relatively clear stamp on the back there, um, which is of interest in and of itself that it's been stamped in such a, a large form. The one in the middle here, unfortunately we don't appear to have any stamps on this that are visible. There are a few hints where some ink may have been, but this is a reduction woven example. So presumably from uh, the Mills Equipment Company, Miko or MWNS. And then we have here a sheridized hook in this instance and a one inch metal tip in sheridized steel as well. But the two inch tip at this end is in brass. So you have a real mix match on this one as well. And then the buckle here, the two inch buckle for attaching this onto the pack or the haversack is also in sheridized steel, as you can see there. So just to give some examples of the different fixtures and fittings that we used and the fact that you can find a real mix of these fittings on individual components. This one at the back again has the, the same manufacturing method here as we saw on the, the first one we looked at. A sheridized steel hook here, a brass one inch tip at this end, and then the end of the two inch strap, we don't have any metal tip at all. And this has been folded in on itself, as you can see, and stitched down just to stop that from fraying at that end. And this is quite common to see again in late war manufactured web equipment, rather than having any metal tip on the end here at all, it's just been doubled over like this or folded in on itself rather. And you'll often see this on the tails, which these attach onto on the back of the pack and the haversack as well. No metal tip, just stitched over like this. This does also have a stamp on the back, which isn't particularly clear but we can see there the date of 1944. And then something limited, which is not all that clear, but someone who knows these markings better than I can probably make out what that is. So I'd be interested to know in the comments if someone can uh, work out who that was that manufactured this, I'd be interested to know. So that's a selection of L straps there, just to show you some of the different fixtures and fittings, different manufacturing methods. We have one of the later sleeve type water bottle carriers here, obviously full length sleeve rather than being sort of half length or two thirds of the length of the bottle. Obviously with a strap at the bottom which loops around and comes up to attach the buckles on each side. And this has a pair of sheridized steel buckles. And that's the only thing that really makes it a particularly an economy version of this. They are slightly rusty, but they are sheridized steel. And then we do have a nice clear stamp in here D and M Limited, and again 44 in the arrow there. So quite a nice clear stamp in that. And as I say, otherwise it's a sort of standard second version of the, the sleeve type water bottle 
carrier, but it just has these economy steel buckles on it, and that's the only thing that really marks it out as being any different otherwise. Nice to have that with the clear stamp in it showing the relatively late war date as well. We'll now have a look at some belts, and we'll have a look at the middle example here first. This has various economy features, most of which can be seen on the inside. First of all, we have webbing loops at the end here, rather than brass sliders to keep the belt together where it's doubled over. And then you can see here, we have a set of smaller C hooks on the back, which hook into the pockets on the back of the belt to adjust it in. We no longer have the big brass section at the end here, riveted, riveted in place. We just have a section of webbing into which these hooks have been stitched to adjust in the belt. So that cuts down on quite a lot of brass used there as well. Other than that, this is pretty much a, a standard belt. You have the, the, the fittings are otherwise standard brass hooks at the front, brass buckles at the back, as you can see. We do have a stamp in here, and this is a Miko 1944 example, Mills Equipment Company. So that has the economy features in terms of the, the way it adjusts and the removal of the brass sliders, but it is otherwise standard. The one we have down here is a product of Bagcraft. And you can see there, I think that's been Bagcraft at some point before the stamp got heavily worn and we have 1940 something. You can see the, the ends adjusting in exactly the same way. We have the webbing loops there in place of the brass sliders. The front buckle is brass. To the rear here, we now have sheridized steel back buckles for where the braces attach onto the belt, as you can see there. You do find these with sheridized steel buckles to the front as well. I just don't have an example, not yet anyway. And then an unusual example at the back here, this is one of the very few pieces of economy RAF webbing uh, that I've seen. This is a 1937 pattern belt. You can see it's made in blue gray. We have quite a nice clear stamp here again, Bagcraft Limited 1944, again, a common manufacturer. Interestingly, in this instance, the small hooks to the rear functions in exactly the same way. These are made of sheridized steel rather than brass, but we do again have the stitched sliders, the webbing sliders rather than brass. We do have a brass front buckle. Again, the two rear buckles are in sheridized steel, as you can see here. So fairly unusual example. I've not seen that much RAF economy webbing around, so an interesting example to have a look at. The final thing to have a look at here are a pair of Mark III pouches. These are both 1944 dated, but show a difference in the earlier production and later production Mark III's. You can see stamp here, we have DNM Limited again, the manufacturer and the date there are 44. And this one, the manufacturer isn't very clear, but we do have a clear enough date there of 1944 on the right, as you can see. This is an earlier example of a Mark III, or the earlier specification that is, with a press stud closure. You can see on the little strap there, and then the male section on the flap. No drainage eyelet in the bottom. This one has a quick release fastener, which was a wartime introduction to the design. And at the bottom here, you have the drainage eyelet, as you can see. So that was a, a change which came about in 1944. You have an example here of the previous design still being made in 1944, the previous iteration of the design and the later iteration of the design. From the front here, all the fixtures, however, are, are in brass. We look at the back, the upper buckles are in brass, but in both cases, the C hooks, which attach these onto the belt, are made in sheridized steel, as you can see there. So again, a mix and match of components made in brass and steel on an individual piece of web equipment. So I hope you found it interesting looking at this. It's certainly an area I find quite interesting, obviously a good example of wartime economy. And again, looking at the various different manufacturing methods, many of which were introduced to allow other companies to move into the webbing manufacturing market and to supply the British forces during the war. It's certainly an interesting area of collecting as well. There are myriad different variations to collect, which is always interesting. And as I say, hopefully it has been interesting looking at some of these different examples in the video. If you have found it interesting and you'd like to see more from the channel, please do consider subscribing if you haven't already. And whether you're newly subscribing or you've previously subscribed, please do make sure you hit the little bell down below the notification button. That will of course alert you when I upload future videos. If you really like my uploads and you would like to support the channel, you can. Both Patreon and PayPal are linked down below. And as ever, a massive thank you to everybody who supports the channel using those two methods. It's greatly appreciated, as I always say. Thank you all very much indeed. 
If you'd like to follow the channel on social media, you can. Facebook, Instagram and Twitter are all linked down below. And if you'd like to get in touch but you don't really use social media, there is of course an email address down there as well. That's everything for this video, so until next time, bye for now.